When you run a speed test on one of the devices in your home network, chances are you're not going to get the maximum speed that your internet plan says you will. If this is happening to you, fear not because you're not alone. So the question is, why is this the case? And is there anything you can do to ensure you're getting the maximum internet speed that your internet plan provides? In this episode from Network From Home, we're gonna be diving into why you're not getting this maximum speed from your internet plan. We'll also be talking about what you can do, if anything, to fix this situation. So when we're talking about your home network and why you might not be getting this maximum internet speed that your internet plan promises, we have to first look at your devices and your home network setup to make sure everything is in place to enable this maximum internet speed. What I mean by this is we need to look at the components that make up your home network and we need to make sure that these components can support this maximum internet speed that your internet plan can provide. Okay, the first devices that we wanna cover here, and these are the most important components of your home network, we wanna look at your modem and your router. And here's an example, just so that way we can walk through it and you can understand what I mean when I say that your devices have to support the internet speed provided by your internet plan. So here you have your internet service provider that's providing an internet connection to your modem, your modem passes this internet connection to your router, and your router passes this connection to your devices. So if an internet plan is providing a maximum internet speed of 200 megabits per second, you need to make sure that your modem and router both can support at least 200 megabits per second. What you need to do here, if you're not sure if this is the case, you can look up the make and model of both your modem and your router, and you can look up the specifications of these devices to ensure they support internet speeds greater than 200 megabits per second. The only other component in your home network that you need to worry about is your ethernet cables. You need to make sure that those can support the internet speed provided by your internet plan as well. As long as you're using Cat5e ethernet cables or above, you won't have any problems. For those that aren't sure what category of ethernet cable they're using in their home network, I'll link to a video up above that I've previously created that walks you through the steps for determining what category of ethernet cables you have. The other part of your home network that we have to take a look at here is the device that you're running the speed test on. In particular, we need to identify how that device is connecting to the internet. When running a speed test, you should be using an ethernet cable as ethernet cables and wired connections to the internet provide faster internet connections than over Wi-Fi. The reason for this is that with Wi-Fi connections, the further you are away from your router, the weaker the Wi-Fi signal will be. The weaker the Wi-Fi signal, the slower the internet connection. So one of the reasons why you might have a internet speed test that's slower than the maximum speed provided by your internet plan is because you're on a Wi-Fi connection and there's some sort of interference or obstruction between your device and the router. Okay, let's assume all components of your home network are in place. Let's assume that the device that you ran the speed test on has an ethernet connection to your router for a wired internet connection and your modem, router, and ethernet cables all support the maximum internet speed provided by your internet plan. With all these things in place, is it likely you achieve this maximum internet speed that your internet plan details? Unfortunately, that's not likely. The reason for this is due to congestion and other users in your local area accessing the internet at the same time. To see what I mean, let's take a look at your home network as an example. So here with an internet plan, let's say you're getting 200 megabits per second. That's what's getting delivered by your modem to your router. So your entire home network has 200 megabits per second to share. Okay, so if you have one device in your home network, no problem, right? You don't have any bandwidth issues. There's no competition or congestion on the network. But as you go ahead and you add more devices to your home network, this 200 megabits per second of bandwidth may get to the point where it's not enough and all these devices are fighting over this bandwidth 
in order to provide an internet connection to the device. This same example can be applied to your internet service provider with them providing an internet connection to your home. What I mean by that is that there's limited bandwidth coming from your internet service provider to the local area where you live. So let's say your internet service provider has wires that can provide 10 gigabits per second to your local area. Now, if you're the only one in your neighborhood that is signed up with an internet plan with your ISP, there are no problems here. There are no issues with the bandwidth. They can provide you with any internet plan you want. But as you see, as more people in the neighborhood start signing up for an internet plan with the same ISP, it can get to the point where the wired connections from your internet service provider to your local area don't have enough bandwidth to support everybody's maximum internet speed. So what happens as a result of this? If everybody's using the internet at the same time, they aren't able to provide that maximum internet speed to all the homes in the local area. As a result, you get a reduced internet speed, and that's why a lot of the times when you run a speed test, you'll get a speed that's lower than that maximum internet speed that's detailed in your internet plan. What's a little bit sketchy about this is that your internet service provider covers themselves a little bit here. In your monthly internet bill, it will detail the speeds provided as part of your internet plan, but they'll use words like with maximum speeds up to or internet speeds as fast as to identify that you're not always going to get this maximum speed as part of your internet plan. And this example that I just discussed, that's the reason why. This is also why if you do speed tests throughout the day at different times, you'll notice that your devices will get different speeds from your internet provider. That's because this is all dependent upon what the other users in your local area are doing. If they're not using the internet, you're going to be getting faster speeds from your internet service provider. So I understand that this is some bad news. There's not really anything you can do and it's not likely that you get these maximum internet speeds that your internet service provider says you can get as part of your internet plan. Especially if you live in urban areas where you have a lot of people living around you, the chances of you getting this maximum internet speed are not likely. If you have any questions about this information or you wanna learn more about this, please drop a comment below. If you found this video insightful and this was new information for you, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like. This will ensure that the video gets shared with a wider audience and hopefully more people will find this insightful as well. Lastly, if you like the content that I provide on my channel, I would encourage you to subscribe. I'll continue to be putting out more tips and tricks for your home network that hopefully you'll find just as useful. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home and we'll catch you on the next one.